kind of offended Chris because he came over and he said, what'd you think? And I just kind of blurted out, I have no notes, which was, to me, the greatest thing you could say to another writer. But when Emily met with him <laughs> like a week later, she was effusive in her praise and very articulate. And he was like, oh, it's better than I got from Matt. I just got, yeah. he had no notes. He had no notes. Yeah, Chris was like, yeah, it was a little better than Damon's reaction to it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Blunt. Hello, I'm Killian Murphy. Hi, I'm Matt Damon. Oh, and we're here with the <laughs> And we're here with the Hollywood Reporter talking about our Hollywood firsts. It could have been Star Wars because I'm a Star Wars kid, but... But everyone's a Star Wars kid. Yeah. I know, but it's the first time that, like, because I was seven. Yeah. It came out in 77. I was probably, in the summer, I was probably six. It was the first time that I ever went and got completely captured by yeah. a movie experience. Yeah, yeah. Where, where I was taken to some other place that I didn't, and I just thought it was, you know, and I wanted to be Luke and Han Solo. Yeah. I wanted to be all those guys, and so yeah. I went home and immediately started dressing up like them and playing like them, and, you know. Well, the, one of the first films I remember watching was Old Yeller. Did you guys ever see Old Yeller? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember being just, like, destroyed by it and wanting to do a movie with a dog. The first audition I went on was for the four feathers that shake. Oh my God, really? Directed, yeah. yes. Heath did it. Heath did yeah. it. And I ended up doing the table read for them, even though I knew I wasn't gonna get the part. But I was like 17 and a, a table read with Heath Ledger and I was like, oh my God. Well, the first audition I did was for a, for a play in Cork uh, called Disco Pigs. And, and you got it. Yeah, and I'd never done anything before in my, in my life. It was my first professional gig. Actors um, love hearing that story. My first audition yeah, I booked. Yeah, nailed it. And nailed yeah, but it. You know, that, you know that confidence of youth where you just... Yeah, you don't think You don't know it. anything, so... Yeah. The first big Hollywood paycheck I got in my mind was uh, I got $25,000 in 1990 for doing a, mo a TV movie called Rising Sun. And uh, I bought my brother a car and I put my mom through her PhD program. And that, that was a really cool That's feeling. Cool. I think I bought like a... Um, a record player and, or a sound system. No, because record players weren't, they weren't as cool as they are now, were they? Yeah, Jack. I feel like I moved out. Like, I think that was the first, I got, I uh, rented an apartment. I feel like that was the first, like being able to not live with my parents. Yeah. I know mine is uh, a, this animated movie called Spirit. It was the first movie that, uh, and uh, that, that was a good one for the kids. Yeah. I think that's like the only movie they've seen of mine. <laughs> <laughs> They saw Mary Poppins was the first one, I think. Come on. Yeah. I think I put it on and walked away. Yeah. But then <clears throat> I think it's strange for your children to watch you. Like they have, it's like you really are somebody else and it's disconcerting for them. And it was disconcerting for my kids because especially with Poppins, it's like a, I look different. I had this like wig on. I sound different. Well, they kind of know you at a soul level. And yeah. so to see you as something that you, they know you're it's not, is, yeah. Though. Yeah. Do, do boys find it strangely? Yeah, they're, but they're very underwhelmed. You know, they're very unimpressed. Suitably underwhelmed, they're big unimpressed. And fans. <laughs> no, they've never <laughs> seen Peaky Blinders. Have they never no. seen it? No, I think they might. Yeah, they watched the ba the Batman movies when yeah. they were old enough. But I, most of my stuff is highly unsuitable. Yeah. <laughs> I met Killian. John and I went to see Killian's play before we did Quiet Place Two together. Yeah. I mean, we were so desperate to work with him, obviously. But and then when we did Quiet Place Two, we were. We were like thick as thieves quickly. Yeah, that's good and it was so great for us then having this kind of shared experience, this shared history to go be thrust into like a married couple and... I think you get something for free when you work with people that you worked with already and you yeah. got on with. Mm -hmm. It just, it kind of transfers onto the screen, particularly if you're playing a couple with history. <laughs> like, so we didn't meet till no, Oppenheimer. Till this, yeah. But you guys... Till this till interview, that. yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt really doesn't charming. do off camera. I didn't know if that was public knowledge, but... And I don't want other actors around when no, I'm on camera. <laughs> yeah, we met for the uh, audition for Adjustment Bureau. Mm -hmm. In like 2009? Nine. Yeah, wow. We've known each other for far too long. Wow. Matt lives in my building, so I, I, I'm actually not used to seeing you in regular shoes. I only see you in slippers. It's very strange. When we come down for dinner, I just wear slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you in shoes for a couple of years, That's I think. True. I found it so emotional. I remember Chris coming in, and it was a staggering script. 
and visceral and captivating. Like the trauma of living with a brain like that was so palpable in the script and I was so scared I wouldn't understand it. It was really overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was the first script I've ever read or ever even heard of that was written in the first person. Yeah. So it's Oppenheimer is using I, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm now walking over here. I'm not, and it's just like, mm. oh my God. And so by the end of the script, I just, I was totally overwhelmed. And I kind of offended Chris because he came over and I, I, and he said, what'd you think? And I just kind of blurted out, I have no notes, which was to me the greatest thing you could say to another writer. You just go like, well, look, man, I, I, have, I have nothing to say. I, this is amazing. But, uh, but when Emily met with him <laughs> like a week later, she was effusive in her praise and very articulate. And he was like, oh, it's better than I got from Matt. I just got, yeah. he had no notes. Yeah, no notes. Yeah, Chris was like, it was a little better than Damon's reaction to it. <laughs> I think it may have been like one of the best scripts I've ever read, yeah. For, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And the scope of it, the ambition of it, the, 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 the ambition of it. The book is so dense and there's so much history and he's kind of woven all of it into this. It's like every frame of the movie is so dense and rich. And How was it for you reading it in the first person? Exhilarating, you know, because it's completely subjective, yeah. you know. And that's what he, he intended to do in the movie, was to make a lot of it through Oppenheimer's eyes and experience it as, as Oppenheimer was, was experiencing it. Thank you for uh, enduring our Hollywood firsts. <laughs>